Emma, how detailed should application answers be? Should we include in-depth examples of work experience? Well, your application should demonstrate that you understand the career that you're looking to being trained in. However, as we've said, you've got a thousand words and you also need to really demonstrate how you meet the published personal specification um, and your motivation um, for applying for the STP. So it's quite a balancing act, really. And what scientific specialism should I apply to? You shouldn't be asking me that question. Um, providing your undergraduate degree is relevant, you should apply for the specialism that you're interested in. And any advice on how to make an application stand out? What are the key points you want to see as a shortlister? Well, it should be readable and well structured, um, and it should also be apparent that you have the potential to become a good clinical scientist on completion. So when I read an application, I hope to appreciate that the applicant has a high level of curiosity um, and that they embed the NHS values um, in the way that they live their life. And what are the stages to this recruitment process? So, after you you're submitting your application, there's then the long listing, which is done via the situational judgment test that um, Liz talked about earlier. Um, then there's the short listing that's done by um, members of the profession, which again Liz talked about earlier. Um, and then finally, there's the interview. Um, and as we've said all the way through and con will continue to say, all the information is on the website. Um, so for each stage, the details are there. And is the programme looking to recruit new or more experienced graduates? Well, the programme welcomes all applicants, provided that you meet the entry criteria. Which university will I be attending? What are the course dates and will the classes be online or virtual? <laughs> Please don't get hung up on this. So you need to think about STP as a job. And part of your job is to attend university. So lectures are no longer voluntary. We are paying you to attend. So neither you nor your employer chooses which university to attend. So NHS England, who commissions the courses, allocates the places. So the list of providers um, are published on the NHS, on our National School website. Often you'll find there's only one course per specialism if the specialism is a small specialism so it's then obvious um, which university it will be but if there's more than one course then the allocation is usually based around ge geography um, but there can be other fa other dependent factors but all courses are accredited by the national school so you can be assured that all courses are delivered to a high standard um, so you'll be provided with travel expenses to attend the university. So each university will have its own timetable, um, which will be shared with you and your training officer. So you can plan your training around your university attendance and also arrange your travel and accommodation through your employer. Now, just to backtrack slightly when I say that all um, lectures are um, compulsory. Obviously, if you're ill, you can't attend lectures. But in those situations, it would be just like being ill on a work day. You would have to let your training officer know, and in this case, your university know that you can't attend the university. And then you would be managed through your trust um, sickness policy. And finally, is the training programme right for me? And what makes an ideal STP trainee? Well, the first part of the question you shouldn't be asking me. So do your own research. Um, read the website where it outlines how STP is delivered um, and what STP covers. Speak to existing STP trainees, speak to STP alumni, speak to STP training officers, speak to members of the profession you are considering entering. Only you know whether it's right for you. So as a training programme, it isn't right for everyone. 
So there's nothing wrong in deciding against applying. Equally, you may conclude that now isn't the right time and you can obviously apply any time in the future. So in terms of what makes an ideal STP, I'd say good time management. Um, it's, it's an intense programme. Um, there needs to be a lot of self-motivation, um, a lot of initiative, good resilience, but definitely a passion and a commitment to applying patient to sorry, applying a science to improve patient care.